Just pulling up the YouTube stream for the record, but <laughs> again, I just didn't catch the actual replay. Yeah, yeah, this is a replay, replay not live. Virtual Galactic debuts new dual launch system. Now that's awesome. Well, what's this? There you go. Release was at 9:26. There you see it releases from the carrier off and lights the motor. Such a cool shot. Virgin Galactic usually releases a very cool onboard video as well after the fact. It will be awesome to see that again. There you see just that acceleration flying away from the carrier aircraft. So cool. Again, folks, this is a replay via SSUV back on the way back down. Here, exactly a part of that, yeah, right in time for that shut down. Yeah. Yep. Rift Wake of full duration, nominal burn, and Virgin Galactic is pretty much, I'm not going to use the word nominal, but they, everything else they've said has kind of indicated that it was a nominal burn. They're all looking good, and just waiting for them to confirm for that final altitude that they reached for apathy, but they did use the word space, so that means they probably surpassed 80 kilometers. Honest again. I'm interested, I don't know if we know this, if Spaceship 2 just burns to depletion or if they do command a shutdown with some reserve in the tank. Because I'm not sure like why you would just maximize your altitude with a burn to depletion. Unless there's some re-entry heating constraint that, I don't know, we were talking about that earlier, I don't think that would be a major factor on a trajectory like this. But and again, Virgin Galactic goes for 80 kilometers, which is the U.S. Definition of space has been used by the Air Force for quite a while, but the international recognized space line is 100 kilometers, it's called the Carmen Line. So, some debate as to whether or not Virgin Galactic is actually reaching space, but from a U.S. standpoint, that is high enough for the, the customers on Virgin Galactic to be considered astronauts. So, that is enough bragging rights, but if you want to go by the international recognized boundary, it's not quite safe. However, uh, Jonathan McDowell, whose research I think is, I think I think his research, I mean, I read the paper, I'm not an expert, but it sounded convincing to me, and I think his argument that it should be 80 kilometers with scientific reasons actually holds the merit. So, I personally do not have a problem with the 80 kilometer line. Right. I think it does hold a lot of scientific value, and if you look at why, the Carmen line was chosen, it was kind of sort of arbitrary. So I, I, I think 80 kilometers is reasonable, that's my opinion, but people may dispute. And these live views are from Jack Fire out in the field for NASA space flight. Actually, asking if they could be trying to lower their landing weight by burning more fuel. Possibly. Don't know if that's an issue. If they were, they could. Like, they don't need to do low approach to do that. In fact, when you're flying a low approach, your engines are almost idle, so um, you're not actually burning that much fuel. So, I would guess this is not a fuel burning thing, and more just a remembering how to land a very awkward dual fuselage carrier aircraft, and it takes a couple approaches, especially if you're flying a little bit of crosswind. Or the pilots just want an excuse to fly longer because it's cool. That could also be a thing. And I'm going to wait before I claim that they landed because I did that last time and then it just took off the thing. So I'll wait till it's more definitive.